Welcome to the Building Great Lives podcast, a podcast about real life, real issues, and finding real answers to life's most difficult questions. And now your host, Trent Gillum. Greetings, everyone. Trent here. Welcome to episode number 57 of the podcast. I'm glad you've joined the Building Great Lives journey. And before we get started, as always, I'd like to say a huge thank you to our monthly ministry partners and to you, the listener. You make this ministry possible, and I'm excited to have you on the Building Great Lives team here at the Building Great Lives podcast. It's our desire to help people from around the world grow, heal, discover, and fulfill their unique purpose. Thank you for sharing these episodes. We're praying these messages of hope reach every possible person in every possible nation. One of the greatest benefits of having a relationship with God is Him being able to lead and guide us. In today's episode, we're going to talk about learning how to listen for the voice of the Lord. And when I say hearing the voice of the Lord, I'm simply referring to all the many ways God deals with each of us. From an audible voice to a gentle tug at our heart, God speaks in innumerable ways. He is not limited, and we need to learn to recognize His voice. We find the very first accounts of God speaking in the book of Genesis. He spoke to his heavenly creation. He also spoke to his earthly creation, but it did not end there. According to the book of Genesis, chapter number 2 and verse number 16, God also spoke to his human creation. There are over 2,000 references in the Bible to God speaking to a man or through a man. But you may be thinking, that's in the past. What about today? Does God still speak today? And that's a great question. And the Bible gives us the answer to it in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. The writer of Hebrews says, Long ago, at many times, and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers. Then he continues by saying this, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by Jesus. The writer of Hebrews confirms, God spoke in the past and God is still speaking in these last days. But notice what else the writer says in Hebrews 3 and 15. Today, if you will hear his voice. So the question is not whether God still speaks. He certainly does. The bigger question is, when he speaks, are we listening for his voice? We need to train our spiritual ears to hear when the Spirit speaks to us. One of the reasons we struggle to hear when God speaks is because He's not the only voice speaking. You see, we live in a busy, hectic, noisy world. In the midst of our busy lives, we must learn to listen for God to speak. We can become so distracted by everyday life and circumstance, making it more difficult to recognize when God is dealing with us. In the first three chapters of Genesis, we can identify four different voices talking in the garden. We find God's voice, Adam's voice, the serpent's voice, and Eve's voice. Matter of fact, the serpent even said to Eve, hath God said? And certainly if Eve is not listening to the voice of the Lord, she cannot answer with certainty that God said, proving once more the necessity of being able to know when God is speaking to us. It's the very same today. There are many voices trying to speak into our lives. 
We certainly have the voice of the Lord, but there's also the voice of the enemy. There's a voice of fear. There's a voice of doubt. There's a voice of anxiety, a voice of depression, and even a voice of uncertainty. In a world filled with so many distractions or voices, it's imperative that we learn when God is speaking to us. Because if we can discern the voice of the Lord, it will change every situation in our lives. We can be facing that enemy of fear or doubt or anxiety or depressions or uncertainties. But if we can get a word from God, that guiding word, that overcoming word, that word of encouragement, if we can get that word in our spirit, it will change everything about our lives. And we find that happening in the Bible. The Bible tells us in the book of John, chapter number 20, verses 11 through 16, Mary Magdalene is distraught. She's heartbroken. She's standing before an empty tomb, weeping because the body of Jesus is gone. She naturally thinks someone has stolen the Lord. She looks and sees a man standing there, and while she is weeping, she looks at him, and she does not recognize him for who he is. The Bible tells us that she thinks he's the gardener, but there come a moment when Jesus speaks to her and calls her name, Mary, and the Bible says she immediately responded, Master. She looked at him and for some reason did not perceive who he was, but yet when he spoke her name, immediately she goes from distraught and heartbroken to rejoicing because she knows his body has not been stolen. He has done as he said he would do. He has resurrected. He is alive. And he is speaking to her, giving her a word, being able to recognize when he spoke to her, when he called her name, changed everything in her life. I'm telling you, that's why it's so important for us to be able to recognize when the Lord is speaking to us. It changes everything everything. When God speaks and we can recognize his voice, fear has to leave. Doubt has to leave. Anxieties have to leave. Depression has to leave. Uncertainty goes away. Confusion goes away. And clarity begins to come. If we want to develop into spiritually healthy people, we have to be able to discern the voice of the Lord because that voice will speak to us in our greatest times of turmoil. That's why the enemy wants to distract us with so many other voices. We must learn how to anticipate and sense and discern. That's God speaking in the midst of life in the midst of circumstance, in the midst of all of the things happening in this world. We must not allow the voices of the enemy to distract us. We must learn how to discern when God is speaking because his voice changes everything. Learning how to hear from God is nothing new to this generation. Every generation has had to learn how to perceive when God was speaking to them. Matter of fact, we find in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verses 1 through 11, the story of young Samuel. He is an answer to prayer, a miracle from God, and at around 12 years old, is already working, serving in the temple, ministering with Eli. Yet even a miracle child from God that is dedicated to the service of the Lord in the temple. He still had to learn how to hear from God or to perceive when it was God speaking. We know that the Bible says that in that day, the word of the Lord was precious. And that word precious means it was rare. 
Israel wasn't living close to God. They were lukewarm, lackadaisical in their relationship with God. Many of them had drifted, taking the things of God for granted. And because of this, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Or maybe it could even be better described this way. His speaking may have not have been rare. It could have been that Israel was rarely listening They were too caught up in their carnality and too caught up in the things of the world to be listening for the voice of the Lord. But when Samuel was laid down asleep at night, the Lord called unto Samuel and he answered and said, Here am I. And he ran into Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I called not lie down again, and he went and lay down again. And we know then the Lord called yet again the second time. Samuel rose up, went to Eli, and said, Here I am, thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. So he worked for the Lord, ministering in the temple. But there was a revealing of the voice of the Lord. Now, that's where we are right now. Many of us have worked for God, and we love God, and we live for God, but there is a dimension of learning how to hear from God that really changes everything in our lives. We can love God, but wander aimlessly. And that's not the plan of God. God wants to bring us into a dimension of relationship. We understand that God is all powerful. He can do anything. He can do all signs, all wonders. Nothing is too hard for him. But God is not just all powerful. God is also relational. It's not just that God wants to do miracles through you, but he wants to have a relationship with you. And the deeper my relationship gets with God, the more I can perceive when he is speaking, the more power that he will anoint me with. And God can use us in a dimension like never before. But that comes not just from his power, but it comes from relationship. So even though Samuel was ministering in the temple, he still had to learn how God would reveal himself. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived. Now, I like that word. Eli perceived that the Lord had called Samuel. That means Eli discerned that the Lord was speaking to Samuel. Eli had to teach Samuel how to perceive that it was the voice of the Lord. As Eli had to teach Samuel, we also have to learn how to perceive the voice of the Lord speaking to us. Therefore, Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and laid down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. This is also very powerful. It does not mean just to hear when someone talks. Speak, Lord, thy servant, heareth the phrase in the original context. It means to be actively listening for them to speak. In other words, before they speak, you are already anticipating it, expecting it, waiting on it, looking for it with the intent to obey. Samuel went and laid down after the third time, expecting, anticipating. When that voice calls me again, that is going to be the voice of the Lord. So learning how to perceive his voice means we have to learn to anticipate 
him speaking to us. Every day of our lives, we need to be anticipating God speaking to us. God speaks in many ways, as Scripture tells us, but we have to live our lives anticipating him to speak to us. We understand the Bible teaches us in 1 Kings 19, verses 11 through 13, that God can speak in many ways. Elijah saw the great and strong wind that destroyed the mountains, but the voice of the Lord was not in the wind that time. We understand that Elijah saw and felt the earth shake with the earthquake, but the voice of the Lord was not in the earthquake that time. He saw fire, but the voice of the Lord was not in the fire. But there was a still, small voice. And Elijah heard it, and he wrapped his face in his mantle, and he stood at the entrance of the cave. And there came a voice unto him and said, See, Elijah was able to recognize. This time God is not in the strong wind or the earthquake or the fire. This time, God is in the still, small voice. But Elijah had to be able to discern. He had to be able to perceive. He had to be able to hear when God chose to speak. It can be difficult to hear a whisper unless you are anticipating and listening for it. Often, God speaks through a still, small voice voice. God does not always speak the way we expect, so we must learn how God speaks and be anticipating it in our lives. God isn't limited. He can speak any way he chooses. So let's look at a few examples of how we can expect God to speak. First and foremost, God speaks through his written word. This is the primary way God speaks today. The more you know his word, the easier it is to discern his voice. Number two, God speaks through thoughts, feelings, and impressions. This is God's personal word to you. Because these personal words can be clouded by our own thoughts or emotions. Any word we think is from God must be backed by the written word of God. God's word is the plumb line against which all new revelations must be measured. Many believers make the mistake of trying to live by these personal words first and his written word second. This is a mistake because his written word is our sure foundation that never changes, nor is it clouded by our own situations, thoughts, and feelings, or frustrations. Every personal word has to flow from the written word. Number three, God speaks through circumstances, both good and bad can go through a great miracle, and God will speak to you of his power to perform. You can go through a difficult situation of loss, and God will speak to you a word of comfort. No matter what situation you're going through, whether it's great or whether it's painful, whether it's on the mountain or in the valley, God has a word that he will speak to you in that season. Number four, God speaks through other trustworthy believers. God will use your pastor. God will use trusted other believers to speak a word to you or to confirm a word. And number five, God speaks through sermons, songs, books, and even podcasts. Simply put, the number of ways he can speak is unlimited. That's why learning to actively listen is so important. God desires to speak to you. So what are a few ways that we can work on learning how to perceive when God is speaking? 
There is always something competing for your time and attention. To hear the voice of the Lord more often and more clearly, you must prioritize making yourself available to him. So the first thing that you can do is to spend time in prayer. When you're praying, ask God to make you aware when he's speaking. Prayer is the classroom time with God. It's a place we learn more about him. While going about our normal lives, we will begin to recognize feelings we first felt in prayer. I recognize many of the things I feel during a church service or throughout my normal day because I felt them in prayer first. The more consistent we become in prayer, the closer we get to him, and the easier it becomes to recognize when he's speaking. When I'm praying, I ask God, help me hear and not miss when you are speaking to me. So the question then, what happens if I do miss it? Well, missing the voice of the Lord never feels good. And if you, like me, have ever missed when he's speaking to you or you fail to obey when he speaks, simply repent. Ask God to forgive you and help you obey next time. Ask him not to hold back talking to you. And again, ask him, Lord, help me perceive when you are speaking to me. The second thing we can do to more clearly hear when God is speaking to us is spend time reading his word. God sounds like what he wrote. What he speaks will never contradict what he has written. If what you feel doesn't match his word, it's not from God. His written word still speaks today. It's important to remember when you're struggling to perceive his voice, you need to read his word. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 said it like this, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So if you want to be able to perceive the voice of the Lord, you need to spend time reading the written word of the Lord. And number three, intentionally listen. Just like being aware of your surroundings when visiting a new place, we must be aware every moment living out our daily lives and routines, the things that must be done, the good things, the bad things. Every moment of our lives, we need to become more spiritually aware. We must live our lives looking and anticipating for God. We live in a busy world where everyday life and calls and texts and social media and notifications are continually bombarding us and demanding our attention. Scripture says seven different times, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. In the original language, this is both a question and an admonishment. It literally is meaning, are your ears awake? Listen, wake up your ears and listen. And the Lord is telling us we must be intentional. Our spiritual ears must awaken that we listen. And last, after you feel like you've heard from the Lord. What next? What do you do then? Well, you need to confirm what you feel. This is often overlooked, but an extremely important part of the process of learning how to listen and obey the voice of the Lord. If you do not understand what you feel, pray about it more. If you still do not understand what you feel, you need to seek godly counsel. Ask your pastor. Consult with a trusted spiritual leader. There are times that God will reveal all that he is saying. There are other times that he will only reveal portions. 
So if you feel confused and you don't understand what he is speaking into your spirit, what you feel, the impression you have, or maybe the dream that you've had, all the many ways that God can speak, if you do not understand them, seek counsel. Confirm what you feel by counsel and certainly by the written word of God. God does desire to speak to you. God is looking for opportunities to speak a word into your spirit, a word of encouragement or a word of correction, a word of guidance, a word to direct each of your steps, a word that will position you right where he wants you. A friend of mine was in a business opportunity. The Lord had blessed them and opened up a way that they could invest money into drilling oil. And when they had everything set up to drill, the Lord spoke in his spirit and said, this isn't the right location. If you drill here, you're going to lose all of your money. And he said, but Lord, you spoke to me and you told me to drill. And the Lord said, not here. And he went to the crew and said, this isn't where we're supposed to drill. And the crew looked at him and said, but it's going to cost us money to move. And he said, but the Lord spoke to me and said, it's not here. It's over there. And if we drill here, we'll lose everything. And they tried to convince him, no, we've done all the research. The oil is here, not there. And he said, the Lord spoke to me that this is not the right location, that the other location is right. They took everything and moved to that other location. They still thinking there's no way there's oil there. But when they began to drill, they hit oil. We need to be sensitive to when God is speaking. God still speaks today. And God is wanting to give you, listener, a word. And as has become our tradition here at the Building Great Lives podcast, I want to pray for you, listener. I want to pray that God would open your spiritual ears, that you would be able to hear what thus saith the Lord. God, I'm praying right now that you would open the ears of every listener. God, let them be able to sense, feel, and know when you are speaking to them. God, I pray that they would feel an urgency to begin to ask you, even right now, Lord, help me be able to perceive when you're speaking. God, I pray that you would help them become more spiritually aware of their surroundings, that they would be able to discern your voice in all the many ways that you have chosen to speak. And God, I am thankful that you're still speaking today. And I'm thankful, God, that you're going to speak to every listener and you're going to lead and guide their paths. In your name we pray. And as always, thank you so much for listening. In the meantime, please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. If you enjoyed this episode, tell a friend, maybe text them the link or share it on your social. You can find me on social at Trent Gillum, on Instagram at Rev Gillum. You can also reach me at Building Great Lives Podcast at gmail.com. And I look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, let's keep building you've been listening to the building great lives podcast a member of the real life church network join us next time as we dig deeper into life's most challenging questions 